Welcome to the Lessons Learned Podcast, a podcast reflecting on the lessons we've learned and those we're still in the process of learning. I'm Komal, your host. I'm an interviewer, investor, and someone who has lived a lot of life in a short time. I built this podcast as a place for us to reflect, to be together, and to learn from one another. Let's get into it. Welcome to Lessons in Resilience. I am on a high today. It has been such a wonderful day. This is my fourth live of the day, the fourth interview, and it is with the incredible Katie Zeppieri. And Katie is, she's an entrepreneur. She's created the organization called Girl Talk Empowerment. And she actually did a series of lives and has her own show where she went live every day, I believe for 14 weeks early in quarantine. And today we're going to be talking to Katie about cultivating and finding your voice, creating spaces for us to share ourselves authentically, cultivating communities for ourselves, and also lessons learned from interviewing folks for 14 weeks straight on this platform in the early days of quarantine. Um, Katie also has launched or has a creative agency that she, she runs as well in Toronto, and this is going to be our first time meeting on live, so I'm super excited about that. Hello, Katie. Hi. How, How are you? I'm well. How are you? I was trying to get the the request. See, this is this is weird being on the other side of this. Come on. I bet. I bet. So you interviewed folks for 14 weeks straight. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes, we like started the after the first week of quarantine, kind of here in the Toronto area. Um, that was where the idea for Together We Rise came, and then since that that second week, we just kind of went straight for 14 weeks and we were doing daily lives Monday to Saturday but I know you know all about that because you've been doing a marathon today. <laughs> I know it's four back to back which is so surreal to have that happen but you know when you get in a flow with it it just feels right and you know that you're serving up good information for folks to tune into to like really connect with themselves around so it feels really beautiful to be able to do it too but I have questions about doing it for 14 weeks. <laughs> Well, what? I have questions about doing how many in a day? Four, <laughs> five, six? <laughs> um, what were some of your major lessons learned from talking to 14 weeks worth of, so if that's six times 14, that's 60, that's like 84 people that you would have done conversations with. What, Very good. Were, what were some major takeaways from those conversations and lessons learned for you from some of these folks that you were in conversation with? Yeah, I think you'd understand uh, more than anyone the power of being the interviewer and listening to other people's stories and, and kind of giving them questions to help pull out their their story. And I think the show came at just a really pivotal point in time. So not only was the COVID-19 pandemic, pandemic like right at the forefront and people were anxious, that's kind of where the idea came to start it. People were super anxious. I saw people commenting about how they were feeling, um, you know, overwhelmed. They didn't know what to believe in terms of the news that they were receiving and how long it was going to be. And I think just even the isolation from family and friends and, you know, losing their, their co-worker connections. Like there were so many things that were shutting down all at the same time and people were afraid. So I think bringing on these inspiring female role models who, you know, are killing it in aspects of their life and career, but hearing how they overcame their own struggles at different points in their life. And it's remarkable because I think sometimes one of the best ways to get yourself through a tough time is to remember the previous tough times that you have overcome. And it's almost like there's evidence that I've been through this and that was really bad. So now I can, I can make it through this. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and hearing how other people have been able to do that in their own lives is really remarkable as well. And then, you know, to the latter part of our 14 week sort of marathon, um, we had a racial pandemic and this civil rights movement come into the spotlight in a way that I've never seen uh, before in, in my time. And uh, it, it just was, it allowed the conversation to go so much deeper with the guests because suddenly people were sharing things about their own, um, you know, challenges that they've worked through. Um, you know, we had guests of all races talking about how they're trying to work to be a better ally and things that were opened up to them 
from these conversations that that everyone was having that they weren't even aware, you know, some of the ways that maybe they weren't being an effective supporter or an effective ally. So it led to some really good conversations. People were willing to be raw and willing to let us in and say like, hey, I'm not doing well or, you know, I'm struggling with this. And then it, it kind of gave us the opportunity to work through it and talk through it and pull out some some nuggets of wisdom. That's incredible. And when you, from like, the beginning of that to when you decided to pause on the lives themselves and, and figure out your next right steps with things. What change did you notice in yourself through that process? Because you're talking to 84 folks, like I know the transformation that can come from receiving people's stories and then also like the inner change that can happen. What kind of anchor was it for you through the pandemic? It, it was an anchor. I think that's a great way of saying it. Um, I, I'm somebody who likes to be busy and both of my businesses are in the events and uh, speaking world. So <laughs> yeah, when, so, yeah, I know. I, I, honestly, come on. Like I've been following you. I don't even know how I landed on your, your profile over the past couple months. I'm like, this girl knows what's up. Like <laughs> we're we, in it. We are in this. We are in it. And um, yeah, so you you felt that same panic. It was like, okay, here we go. You know, I had all these things lined up, all these events. I was supposed to be in the states like four different times in March and and April, and you know, had the plane tickets booked and had all of these things together, and then it all just stopped. And so it was a scary time for me too. It was. Um, what am I going to do <laughs> and for my own mental health? Yes, I need that shutdown time. Of course, we all do. But I truly thrive when I am busy and when I have a project to focus on and, and sink my teeth into. So yeah, you're absolutely right. It turned out to be like personally an anchor that every day, you know, I got up and I had something to look forward to. I had these conversations to look forward to with inspiring women. And I was taking so much from the experience. So um, it was a great honor. Mm. That's so beautiful. And I love seeing the episodes roll out on the podcast as well. And there was just, it's cool to see also how the conversation shifted, like you said, in real time, as we were all going through these various aspects of the pandemic, civil unrest, all the different pieces. Um, and your emphasis on speaking specifically to women was also really helpful, I'm sure, to so many of us so that we could be in that shared experience together as well. Um, when I was doing some research on you, you shared that you did go through your own burnout experience um, a few years back. Can you share a little bit about what that taught you for yourself in terms of your own wellness and how you show up for yourself and stay well now? Yeah, I, uh, 2017 was a tough year for me. And uh, I, I, I think it's really tied to this idea of living on a constant go, go, go basis. I actually had a guest on the show. It's awesome because all the women that I was talking to, they all get it, right? They're all doing yes. the same things. You're like preaching to the choir here. But they were like, uh, Chloe Wilde came on the show and she said, um, I like to live on the edge of burnout. <laughs> and I thought that was such a good summary. It's like, yes, I, me too. I think I like living on the edge. But I think the challenge is you have to give yourself a moment to step back within that living on the edge. You can't be there 100% of the time. I think we all have a different scale of, of how much we like to be there. And, you know, I like to be there a lot, but I definitely need to have those times where I'm not there. And so um, 2017, I felt like so many things came to a head. There were a lot of opportunities that I had been working towards, applying for um, in my career. Like there were things that I felt like doors were closing in a way that I, I wasn't prepared for. And um, it, it also affected me on a personal level. I just felt like I didn't have time for anyone. Uh, I wasn't kind of taking those moments to ground myself and be present. I felt like I was constantly living in the future and constantly worrying about the next thing. And it, when, th when doors start to shut and you're in that like moving forward process, you kind of stop for a second and go, okay, whoa, what is this all about? <laughs> mm -hmm. What is the purpose behind all of these things? Like where are these steps leading me? Where am I going? And I felt lost. I felt really, really, really lost. And um, I kind of described for a bunch of different reasons, it led to just 
being on the couch <laughs> and not wanting to go out and not wanting to have people around me feeling super dark like um, it was something I never experienced before you know how we'll say oh yeah I feel like depressed today and we kind of just use it like it's like a casual sort of adjective but to actually be in a state where you cannot see hope yeah. um, is terrifying and I was I was in that uh, for I'd say at least two months straight and the effects of that kind of continued on and lingered in many ways even afterwards and there'd be little triggers and little setbacks that would kind of send me right back to that place of, of confusion and hopelessness. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I struggled to get out of that and I tried to start small and start to talk to my family and start to talk to my friends and you know my, my boyfriend and I just started having these conversations about what I was experiencing and um, really learn the value of taking a small step. And that's, that's kind of where, like, after I, I got out, you know, a year or more after I got out of that, I felt inspired to kind of write some poetry to just kind of describe what that experience was like. And the one poem that I talk about, it's like, sometimes getting out of bed is an act of bravery. And I really experienced that. It's like some days it was just enough to kind of get yourself out of bed and you know brush your teeth and and try and just be sort of present in the day so it's about relearning <laughs> kind of how to be in the moment mm -hmm. and how to appreciate the people in your life I, you know i always thought i did but when you go through a struggle like that you recognize how much you need the people that we take for granted so often especially when we're hustling and bustling and rushing ahead and so I also sought uh, therapy for the first time during that experience. And I realized I had had stigma against therapy, you know, that I didn't even recognize. And it took a lot for me to kind of take that step and say, you know what, I think I'm going to try this and, and to kind of go through that process. And uh, so all of those things, you know, in reflection, I can kind of sit back here now, not saying everything is perfect and everything is wonderful, saying that 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 moment, that experience, that time really opened up for me a different way of looking at the world and a different way of looking at myself. I now recognize that I can go there. I can go to those dark places. And so it's, it's made it clearer for me that I need to do the self-love, self-care, self-development stuff that I kind of would have rolled my eyes at before. Like I used to think yoga wasn't a workout. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I remember those days for myself as well. <laughs> right? I was like, no, like, that's, you know, I, I run and I play soccer and I box and, you know, kind of having, again, like, just realizing all of these sorts of moments of, like, pride. Um, and once I kind of, my mom always told me, my mom teaches yoga, funny enough, my mom told me, there'll be a time in your life where you'll recognize that you need it. And it'll just kind of connect for you differently. And so she was right. Um, I went, you know, I tried yoga during that time. I was open to trying these things and doing these things that I hadn't before. I hadn't made time for before. And I found it to be very healing. I found it to be like a very emotional um, experience and release that, uh, that I continue to try and put those practices in place even to today. Hmm. And I, what I love about how you shared that and thank you it was such a like you shared so much that I resonated with so deeply like I remember when I 2017 was my terrible year as well oh no way <laughs> come on <laughs> we're living the, the same timeline beautiful here I love this and this was like the home that I healed in uh, I was in Brooklyn and then moved back to Ottawa because I was faced with a neurological illness and there was some days I would lay in bed and my father-in-law would just come knock on the door and say, Coco, you good? Coco's my nickname in my family. And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Thanks for checking in, Pop, because my husband would be at work. And yeah, just leaving bed that day was that act of bravery and was that act that was just enough or even like, it's just so surreal to think back to how low we could, can feel. And that yeah. that spectrum, though, it gives you the empathy to be able to connect and have these conversations with folks. And that gives you the depth to be able to connect with other people when you, can, when you come out of that. Um, so when it comes to those practices now that are like your form of self-care, what has anchored you through the pandemic? Because it's also hard when you know how deep you can go into, into the depression, into the dark. Um, 
to keep yourself in a stable space when we go through a collective trauma like what we're experiencing with the pandemic. So the show was a big part of that. But what other aspects have grounded you in your days? Yeah, I think um, I realized that I think projects are the way I like to do things. So it's like, Together We Rise, the daily Instagram live show, that was a project. And because there were so many aspects of just like creating the graphics and editing and show notes and booking the guests and all of these sorts of pieces, it, it was like a fully intensive process. And I'm so grateful that I had a co-producer, shout out Jessica, um, who helped me uh, throughout the process because it, it, was, it was a beast. And so during that time, I tried to allow myself, you know, the grace to say, I'm not going to have this perfect self-care routine during this time, but I'm still going to make time. And so the one thing that I promised myself was I would be not missing my workouts four to five times a week. And I would try and do those like early in the morning um, and just kind of like clear that, that portion of my day and just get myself off the computer and get myself off of the phone, which was just crucial. I also tried to give myself a little bit of, um, restrictions around scroll time and uh, kind of going too deep either on social media or even in the news. It was like, choose which medium you're going to use to get your news. I really like audio. I really like radio. So it was like, try and listen to like bite-sized versions of that and not get caught up in sort of the Twitter, <laughs> the Twitter vortex. Of just, it just you know, sucks you right in. It sucks you right in. So there were certain like restrictions and things that I tried to do, but um you know, when you're in a busy season, you, you also just have to kind of push through. And so I think what works for me, what I've learned works for me is kind of like the ebb and the flow. So it was a hardcore 14 weeks. And after that, I really took time off. Like I really just pulled it right back. I'm kind of just ramping up again now to kind of start working on the next few things. So um, it's, it's about kind of knowing what you need to do in that time, but still making room for a piece of the self-care routine and then also making sure that after you kind of climb the mountain climb the hill you come down and you take that time to to reconnect and uh and center yourself and how did you learn this about yourself because i'm also a sprinter i love like six to eight weeks is like my sweet spot yeah like go all out and then i need at least two to three weeks to recover but I felt guilty about that work style for a long time because I'm not a regular nine to fiver. I love working 10 hour days, 12 hour days sometimes, but then I know I need to counter that with, with the downtime and the rest time. And I think that's why entrepreneurship works so well for me because traditional workplaces wouldn't necessarily be down for me taking three weeks off every eight weeks, <laughs> but it's what works well for me. And so when I learned to like, extract myself from traditional beliefs around work is when I found my freedom and my wellness was able to like anchor into that. Were you always, did you, would you always have that awareness around your work style or how did you come to, to learn that about yourself? Yeah, that's a very good question. I think, um, I think I, I kind of was doing this for a while and didn't really recognize that that's what I was doing. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, previously up until last year, uh, the big event that my organization Girl Talk Empowerment ran was Girl Talk Day. It's like this annual pep rally every year in June. We'd bring a thousand girls ages 11 to 18 together for this one day event and we'd bring in speakers and musical performers and it was like a big sort of production and it took about six months you know, to, to plan and prepare and bring that event together. And I'd always, <laughs> I have a mentor and um, I'd always crash like after June, like July, he'd be like checking in on me, like to see, you know, where I was on some of the projects. What's going on? Where are like, you? Katie, why do you take the summer off? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I felt really bad about it. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Because it's like, I, I think probably similar to you, when you're in those 10 hour days, you have so much energy. Yes. Like it's like, it, it just feels endless. Like I'm like, I can keep going. I can keep going. I'm good. I'm good. But then when it stops and you do crash, like I'm kind of done. Like it's like, yeah, maybe three hours today, max, you know? Yes. Um, and so it was trying to like, I think recognize that that's what works for me and just sort of lean into it a little bit. Uh, I do have a tendency to to feel my inner critic saying that I'm being lazy during those times where I'm doing three hours. Hands up over here. <laughs> and I hate that. I absolutely hate that because we're completely not giving ourselves credit for 
the you know however period of time before. the compounded work like the double work days that the double work that. days yeah so I, you know it's a work in progress basically I think like and the more that you kind of lean into it and own it I try and book things around knowing that I know that this section of time is going to be really heavy so if I want to be ambitious and get stuff done we're going to fit it in here yes <laughs> and then try and book lighter weeks you know don't schedule the calls or don't schedule the meetings during the weeks where I think I'm going to have a little bit more of a down period in time and when I start to do that self-critical thing I try and remind myself of of what I've just done and I'll allow myself to to rest that time of celebration is so important and I often forget to like schedule that in like I have regrets like after some big events in my life, I've just jumped on a plane the next day to go to the next thing. And scheduling in that time for celebration is so important too, and like appreciating what we've done. So when you ended the 14 week sprint, or even when you look back on Girl Talk, sorry, Girl Talk Days, what you, it, it's yes. called? Yes, I just wanted to make sure it was correct. Um, how do you, like, how do you soak in and celebrate yourself? Is that something that you feel comfortable doing or like what do the moments when you're like so proud of yourself like how do you let yourself enjoy that because I think that's a struggle for a lot of type a folks as well is to truly <laughs> celebrate and like be in loving the shit out of what we did Kamal I feel like I'm just meeting you for the first time and I feel like you already know me and all of my issues it's great um <laughs> So, you know, exactly. Um, yeah, self celebration. Wow, it's like even the way that you said that, I'm like, I don't know if I look at it like that, but uh, I try and I try and like soak in in reflection. You know, um, when you're in the heat of it all, you're not maybe like watching the videos back. You're not maybe kind of like listening as if you were a viewer or kind of, you know, just, just experiencing the conversation for what it was. You're kind of in the mode of like work. And uh, I really enjoy kind of getting a chance to step back, you know, maybe a week after, two weeks after with sort of that fresh perspective and actually like watching the video and reliving some of those moments, whether it's from an event that, you know, I was hosting or something that I spoke at or even like, like a podcast or, or an Instagram live episode. And you kind of like listen back and you're like, that happened. Like, that was nice. awesome. And you kind of get to, like, step back into that moment and allow yourself to feel, like, all of those sorts of things. And you're without the pressure and without the worry about getting everything posted and getting everything up. So I try to allow myself to do that. And I, I do love, um, I do love being outside for my, like, complete relaxation. Uh, not gonna lie, quarantining with the family is pretty awesome right now. We got a pool, we got a little yes. fire pit. And yes. those things do it for me. Like the fire at night, I just feel so relaxed just mm -hmm. sitting there and, you know, just feeling the warmth, just staring at it. It's very uh, meditative, meditative for me. Yes. yes. I, and, and I just find myself like calm. And um, in those moments, like I feel a sense of gratitude. That's for me. I'll sit there and I'll just be like, like, this is remarkable. <laughs> Here's this flame, you know, light is such a powerful symbol. I'm a Christian. And I just think about, you know, being the light in the world. And that's just kind of like a mission for me. And, and I believe that, you know, we're called to each shine our light. So whenever I have moments like that, that connect me back to what's real, what's tangible, what's present, what's nature, it just feels cleansing. And it reminds me of my purpose. And I think what I've really enjoyed about quarantine is like, the simplicity that we come to appreciate again. Because again, like I can just look out of my window and see like the leaves blowing on a, on a tree branch. And you can, I feel like my mindfulness has increased because I can appreciate the smaller moments so much more. And that that counters like the intensity of, of a day with four lives or whatever that looks like. There's just like this, the contrast for appreciation is so high right now. Um, at least, like, that's my experience, and I think that's what I'm hearing you say about, about your evening rituals. Um, so when it comes to these conversations, they were an anchor for you. They were something that you could lean on every day to help you through that initial tough time. Um, what are some moments that, like, stuck out most to you or, like, fangirl moments or just, like, moments where you're like, oh, my God, is this happening? Like, what were some of your favorite interviews, conversations that happened in those 
14 weeks. Oh my goodness. Um, what comes to mind right away, I loved getting to interview Michelle Romano um, from CBC Dragon's Den and founder of Clear Bank and so many other amazing companies. I've, I've looked up to her, admired her for, for a long time. I just think she's, she's, she's that type of person who's working around the clock doing so much behind the scenes that people don't see uh, all the non-glamorous stuff. And um, she's always trying to grow and build and create something new. And I just love that about her. So interviewing her was like infectious. You just bring her on and it's like, she was like, she, she said, she's like, I just threw on lipstick just for this, you know, <laughs> shot type thing. And she's like holding it up here. Um, you know, and then she's holding up a prop of a fish from like her first business, like stuff that you never heard about, the things that she started and tried and that didn't work out. And I love her, her message on um, iteration. And she just, she really says that, you know, there's not kind of like this eureka moment where you know exactly what to do. It's a series of trying something, running headfirst into a wall with the idea, smashing it, you know, pieces fall but some pieces stick, taking those pieces that stick and running forward and smashing into the next wall. And I, that really resonates with me. It's like your, your ideas aren't always going to be perfect on the first go. It's about kind of like trying it and going for it and continuing to take what works and leave behind what doesn't. So I really love that shot. That was a fangirl moment for sure. <laughs> um, Miss Julie Black, Canada's queen of R&B, like, yes. oh my gosh. I that, love Julie. <laughs> that interview, and I, I love Julie too, and I'm, I, like, you know, I've, I've definitely been, been on her show before, and those are things, but she was, like, in a whole other state when, when we went live, like, it was, like, a spiritual experience, and she said, I want to leave COVID-19 uh, better, not bitter. And she said that again and again and in different ways. And she just brings so much like soul to everything that she does. She, she only participates in things that she feels passionate about. Um, you know, she's, she's out there like pushing towards her dreams and goals. So love that. That was such a refreshing, beautiful chat as well. I could go on and on. I, I love them, but those, those are two that right top of mind stand out for me. I, I asked because it's just like, those when you can publicly have meaningful conversations with people it's such a gift because i feel like the intimacy of the conversation can teach people so much about themselves and then about each other and how they can relate to each other or learn from each other and especially in quarantine we can often forget to ask like the, those closest to us meaningful questions to like dive deeper because i think what quarantine has also taught me is like you can go really deep with people that you've known for ever like yeah. the people that you take for granted or that are just a part of your life. Like there's a novelty that can come from that, that shared experience. So I'm sure your conversations, and I know they have had immense impact on so many people. Um, as we're coming to a close with our time, what are the things that you're working on now that you're super excited about for the future? You've come out of this now downtime phase post the 14 weeks of interviews. What, what's in, what are you cooking? <laughs> oh well we're really excited about together we rise now as a podcast so um it's on all the places where you can listen to your podcast and we're really excited about kind of rolling out the interviews four episodes a week um for the foreseeable future <laughs> yes um for season one and we're excited to sink season one so we're planning to come back in the fall with uh with another batch probably not daily lives but um another batch <laughs> of interviews uh also i just launched today um a little remake of my monday morning newsletter named it rise and shine it's oh, life and career that. inspiration to kind of get you uh get you going and get you started for for the week ahead so there's a curated articles and there's a quote of the quote of the day and all that sort of stuff there. Also really excited for Girl Talk because while we've been running this this pep rally and we've been targeting young girls for the past seven years, we're in the middle of a major brand shift. So we're actually completely relaunching. Um, haven't made the official announcement of what it's going to be yet, but it's going to have a much stronger focus on speaking. So that is what uh, I can say for that. I love that. I, I, our friend, Jam Gamble, I am Jam Gamble. She helps, oh, yeah. she's a speaking coach and she helps people find their voice. And it's so critical, especially for young women to like anchor in and root into what their voice 
can do for them and what their story, the impact that it can have. So I'm super excited to see it all roll out in the coming weeks, months. Um, and I so appreciate you taking the time today, Katie. My last question for you is just, I know that there's so many people, like the section where we talked about uh, this conversation around the, the dark times and the depression when we come through it, there are folks at home right now who are just really in the thick of the hard and are looking for that reminder. Um, what do you have to say to them uh, about coming through this hard season? Whew. Um, I know what it's like to be in that dark place. And um, if you're finding yourself there right now, um, I just want you to know that even if you cannot see the other side, you can't see a way through it, you can't see how things are going to happen for you, whether it's personally, whether it's professionally, wh whatever it is that you might be struggling with, just know that there is another side. There is another side. There is a continuation to the story that you just cannot see yet. And um, I love this image, and it's been shared on Instagram many, many times, but there's this image of God sort of, um, you know, holding a little teddy bear in front, and behind his back is a giant teddy bear. So it's like you're kind of disappointed, you know, that you're, you're, you think it's not working out for you, but what you don't know is that just behind, just on the other side, there's this really amazing thing that's going to be there for you. And even if you can't see it, just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. So I really just want, want to ask you to lean into hope. And hope is believing and having vision even when you cannot see. And take it one day at a time. Don't think about 10 years from now. Don't think about five years from now. Just focus on today. What can I do today to take a productive step forward? And sometimes as we discussed, that is the smallest action. It can literally be just getting out of bed. It can literally be just telling your, your parents or a sibling or a friend, I'm struggling. I'm not doing okay. It can be booking a therapy appointment. It can be any of these things, right? It's about taking whatever productive action makes sense for you that day and focusing on how can I make it through today. Um, one of my poems from She Rises book was, because I survived yesterday, I know I can make it through today. And I love that. So remember what you've been through, where you've come, uh, and, and remind yourself that tomorrow, you know, new opportunity lies ahead. Hope is on the other side. That's so beautiful and the best way to end. Thank you so much for your time, Katie. I'm excited for everything that's to come. I'm going to take a second to just remind everyone that tonight my registration for my master class in resilience and leadership, which is exactly what Katie was talking about, is that ability to see for yourself a future that doesn't yet exist, even if right now is so hard. Um, the registration for my master class closes at midnight tonight, and I would love to have you in class. Thank you so much for your time, Katie. Come I'm on. So excited that we finally connected. <laughs> I'm really happy. Okay, I'm really happy that we connected here. Would love to meet in person when we're on the other yes. side of all of this. Congrats on what you're launching. Like, this is remarkable. You're, you've been putting out some incredible work over the past uh, little while. Really excited about your course launch day. You're, you're part, you partner with some amazing, inspiring women. So it sounds like there's just so much value to be um, gained from, from what you're offering here. So kudos to you. And uh, thank you for inviting me into this space. Thank you. You are interview 13 in the last two weeks. So I'm feeling two weeks of what you went through. But it's so awesome. Like, honestly, these conversations have filled me so much. And I, you know, in those moments of celebration, I'm so proud of myself. This is the last live of this registration period. And I, I just couldn't be happier. So this is a really nice, like, I'm going to toast some water with you. Yes. A little cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> and to everyone at home. <laughs> Nothing Thank like a glass so much, of water. Katie, and I can't wait until we get to chat next. Sounds great, Kamal. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you loved this episode, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. And if you want to follow me, Komal, check me out on Instagram at K-O-M-A-L-M-I-N-H-A-S or the show at LessonsLearned.com. 
And if you have an idea of a lesson that we should dive into on the show, then slide into our DMs and submit there or on the website along with any guests you think I should interview and talk all of the things with. As always, I hope that you make some time for you this week and reflect on the lessons you're learning or have learned and take some time to celebrate all the incredible that is you. Until next time, guys. Bye.